In this short video, we'll see how one can calculate delta U, the change in internal energy, and delta H, the change in enthalpy, from calorimetry data. The bomb calorimeter, because it's a constant volume situation, will give us information concerning delta U, because delta U, in this case, will equal Q. There is no work done because the volume is held constant. To determine H, delta H, or the change in enthalpy from bomb calorimeter data, you must account for the work that was done, and we'll have to approximate that in the example I'll show you now. A 0 0.0194 gram sample of quinone C6H4O2 is burned in a bomb calorimeter that has a heat capacity of 1.56 kilojoules per degree Celsius. The temperature of the calorimeter increases by 3.2 degrees Celsius upon the combustion of quinone. Calculate the energy of combustion per gram and per mole. Notice here we're calculating the energy of combustion. In this case, the energy is, of course, the change in internal energy. I'm going to calculate it per gram and per mole. In this case, we see that we're burning 0.194 gram sample of the fuel. <clears throat> the heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter is 1.56 kilojoules per degree Celsius. So that is the absolute heat capacity for that particular device. We do not have to include water here. The temperature of the calorimeter increases by 3.2 degrees Celsius. Okay, so to calculate the energy of combustion <clears throat> in units of <clears throat> energy per gram and per mole, first we're going to need to calculate the amount of heat energy that was liberated when this particular fuel was burned. And so the heat energy is going to equal the uh, heat capacity of the calorimeter times the change in temperature. We do not have to multiply by the mass of, for example, water because the calorimeter has been calibrated as a unit. So this is a simple calculation, 1.56 kilojoules per degree Celsius times the change in temperature here is 3.2 degrees Celsius. So the amount of heat that was liberated here is 4.99 kilojoules. Now this heat was liberated per the amount of sample that was burned. So if I want to report the energy of combustion per gram, all I need to do is take the heat that was liberated. In this case, the heat that was liberated is 4.99 kilojoules. So I'm going to divide the heat that was liberated by the amount that was um, combusted. Okay, and this is going to give me the energy per gram. All right, and I know that this is also going to tell me the change in internal energy because that's what I'm getting. And in this case, <clears throat> it is going to be uh, 4.99 kilojoules of energy liberated divided by 0.194 grams of sample. And that equals... Um, let's see, divided by one gram, 25.7 kilojoules per gram. Now, since this was the heat that was given off, then the change in internal energy, this is going to be a negative 25.7 kilojoules per gram. If I want to also report this <clears throat> in units of per mole, then I just take my value, negative 25.7 kilojoules per gram of the quinone, which is uh, C6H4O2. Um, and I'm going to convert that to moles. Now I need to know uh, the formula so that I can calculate the molar mass. The molar mass of quinone is just going to be the sum of all of the uh, molar masses of the um, individual elements. So the molar mass of uh, C excuse me, C6H4O2 is going to be um, 6 times 12 for the carbon plus 4 times 1 gram per mole for the hydrogen plus uh, 2 times 16 grams per mole for the oxygen. I've left off the units here to speed up the process and that turns out to be 108 grams per mole. So um, the molar mass is 108 grams of C6H4O2 per one mole of C6H4O2. 
So the energy then per mole, the change in energy or the energy of combustion per mole is um, going to be here uh, negative 2,780 kilojoules per mole. All right, so if I wanted to then calculate the uh, change in enthalpy for this particular, um, I wanted to calculate the change in enthalpy for this particular combustion uh, reaction, I would take the, um, let's see here, I would take, I would have to account for any work that could have been done. So in this case, if I want to convert, I'm going to have to say, well, I know that the change in internal energy equals, excuse me, equals the heat into or out of the system plus the work. And right, to calculate the change in enthalpy now, uh, for this case, we know that the change in internal energy equals Q plus W. I've calculated um, the change in internal energy to be negative 2,780 kilojoules per mole. I'm going to do a slight approximation and assume that the Q in this case is equal to delta H. And so then I just need to calculate the work term to, um, to uh, be able to calculate the delta H. This work equals, of course, P delta V, negative which equals negative change in N RT. So to get the change in N, I need to have the balanced chemical equation. I'm going to assume the temperature is at 298 Kelvin for this um, particular uh, calculation. And so I'm going to work on getting the work, but first I have to get the balanced chemical equation so I can know the change in gas moles. So I know that it's the combustion, C6H4O2. So combustion means combines with oxygen to give carbon dioxide plus water. And so um, I'm going to assume that this is a liquid. This is a gas at 298. This is a gas. And this is going to have to be a liquid at room temperature. And so when I balance it, I'm going to get six moles of one mole of uh, quinone, six moles of oxygen, six moles of carbon dioxide, and two moles of water. So if I only do it at 298 Kelvin, and if I look at the change in the number of gas moles here, um, it is uh, delta N is equal to final moles minus initial moles gas moles, which is 6 minus 6, which is 0. So I can assume that here the work was 0. So in this case, if this is 0, then the um, internal energy is going to be the same as the change in enthalpy, which is going to be negative 2,780 kilojoules per mole. Typically in these cases the, of the combustion, the work is a very small part of the total energy, so this in this case is a pretty good approximation.